And I just want to welcome everybody. Can you give yourselves a round of applause for coming to the house of God today? Can you wave to everybody watching online? What's up, you guys? Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, for the ones that I haven't met, I'm the associate pastor, Pastor Robert. Pastor Marco is our senior pastor. Um, he's taking a few days. Um, he was exposed with COVID from his family, and so he's taking a few days off right now. And can we pray for our, our pastor in his house and his family? But, you know, really, can we stand to our feet, you guys? Let's just stand to our feet right now. If you're at home right now, stand to your feet. Maybe you're not used to standing at home, just kind of maybe cooking breakfast or hanging out. I want to pray. Is it okay if we pray for a few minutes? 2 Timothy chapter 2, or 1 Timothy chapter 2. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. We're going to pray for your needs today, that God will help you. We have people that are watching. We're going to pray that God will help you. How many need help from God? I need it. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by the godliness and dignity. We're going to pray for everyone here. Maybe you have some anxiety. I was praying yesterday, and the Lord showed me that there's some people here today, 9 o'clock, and they had like probably 40, 30, that they had anxiety. And if you, can you slip your hand up if you've been dealing with anxiety, just in specific to that right now? Can you raise your hand for a sec? Keep it up. just want to see you for a minute. Just want to see you. Your anxiety is going to be gone by the time you leave this room today. In the next few minutes, your anxiety is gone. Okay? Some of you guys have been having anxiety attacks. It's going to leave in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for family restorations. There's so many people right now during this pandemic um, that have filed for divorce. People are getting divorced for whatever reason. And we're going to pray for family restoration. How many know that God restores families? We're going to pray for that. If you're sick right now, we're going to pray. You're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. You're sick watching us online right now. You're going to get healed in the name of Jesus. Not only that, and I want to thank the prayer team, intercessory team. You guys did a video yesterday. Um, we're going to start prayer tomorrow at, is it 5 a.m. or 6 a.m.? We're going to start prayer tomorrow at 6 a.m. We're going to go all the way till Tuesday midnight. We're going to pray for our country and elections on Tuesday, for our country, our state, our um, so if you could do 20 minutes of that, you could do a half an hour of that, you could log, just, just pray. How many know we need prayer more than ever before? We need prayer. So I want to pray for Tuesday. You know, people ask, Pastor, uh, what do we do voting? It's very simple. We vote the Bible. It's very, it's very simple. We vote the Bible. And we're praying, at a, praying for our city, our state, our country, but I want to pray for you guys as well that breakthrough is going to hit this place today. How many believe breakthrough is in the air right now? Breakthrough is here. So if you want to join us, we're going to be praying Monday to Tuesday. We're going to do like a 24-hour shift in a sense. We're going to be praying, fasting um, for the election Tuesday. And I encourage you guys to vote and get involved. It, it's our responsibility as Christians to vote. It's actually irresponsible if we don't vote. It's our responsibility to vote and take action and let our voice be heard. Because I'm letting the devil know right now he can't have San Bernardino. I'm letting the devil know right now he can't have my family. How many are with me? He can't have my family. He can't have my kids. We're declaring San Bernardino for God. And that's why we're hitting the streets in Pomona like crazy right now. We had about 300 people show up yesterday for food. People getting saved during the pandemic. We're even launching a church in Pomona during this pandemic. God is on the move. Now, I want us to pray. I want you guys to start praying right now, and I'm going to join you guys. Just start praying for our country. Start praying for cities. Start praying for election time. Start praying. You're online right now. Start to pray. You're not with us in this room right now, but wherever you're at, you're at home. Spend 20 seconds. Spend 30 seconds. Spend a minute right now just praying. Spend the next few days praying for what's happening to our country and the, the switching office possibly or whatever's going to happen to you. Say maybe even a civil war in different cities and just begin to pray for our country and pray for the unrest in people. And Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We lift up your name, God. And we pray for this week on Tuesday, election time. 
that Father God, your perfect will will be done. Your perfect will will be done. Any proposition, any measure that doesn't represent you, we command that proposition not to pass. We command that measure not to pass. Anything that goes against your word. From here to New York to Chicago, Lord, we lift up the United States of America. And Father, I lift up everybody in this audience and people that are watching God for breakthrough. I come against anxiety in the name of Jesus. A lot of you guys walked in anxious. You're going to leave here set free in the name of Jesus. There it goes. We command anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus. We command anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. Right there in the second row. There you go, sweetie. You're getting healed right there. God's healing you right now. God's healing you right there, sweetie. God's healing you right there. There it goes. That's the power of God. If you're sick right now, we command healing right now in Jesus' name. You're watching us from home. We command coronavirus to leave your home, to leave your body in the name of Jesus. We command you to go. We command you to go. We speak health in the name of Jesus. We speak health in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you our lives, God. Touch everybody in this audience. Marriages that need to be restored. Heal the marriages. You're watching at home. We need a marriage to be restored right now. There it goes. Please, God, touch these marriages right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for our house. Shall be called a house of prayer, Lord. Father, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big shout of praise today, this morning. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. God is good. And his mercies endure forever. You can be seated if you can. If you got to stand up, stand up. It's okay. I want to welcome all of our first-time guests again. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And one thing today, man, you're going to get encouraged God's going to build your faith today. I need a faith dosage. Anybody need a faith dosage right now? I need, a, I need an injection of faith. And you're going to get faith today. Whatever situation you're facing, God is going to, God's going to see you through. Turn to Psalm 62, um, verse 1 and 2. It's going to be the first scripture I'm going to read. Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2. As you're turning there, you know, these last couple weeks have been just, just crazy. Have some good moments and then a few tough moments. Anybody like me, the last couple weeks just kind of up and down a little bit? Yeah. Um, one good moment, my Dodgers won the World Series. Man, that was beautiful to see. you probably seen the video, man. I was hollering and screaming, going crazy. My Lakers won too. You know what's next, right? The Rams are going to win. I speak the Rams right now. We're about to have a trifecta in Los Angeles. Three teams. Or the LA Galaxy soccer team. They're super good too. So we could have four teams win in L.A. Anyways, man, awesome. Great moments. Then uh, not, not so okay moments. Um, this week, um, I did a funeral for two people this week. One, 19 years old. Another one, 26. Whew. I was cheering for my Dodgers. Great days. Cool. Then uh, I cried with people this week. I cried with the families. Cried with them. The 19-year-old, the, the I, I went to Los Angeles to do this funeral, cried with his family, cried with them. How did these two people die? They died in their sleep. Wo had a heart attack and died. Both of them. We've had six young adults, I think it's seven actually now. Seven young adults that's related to the church somehow. Seven that have died in these last three weeks under the age of 30. So I've had some up moments. I celebrated my 43rd birthday. It was just kind of just up and down. My feelings, I was like, man, what's going on? Just so, how many are with me? It's kind of like a roller coaster of events. And now maybe a, a second wave of corona, whatever's going on. I'm like, man, just up and down. And I, I, and I went to the Lord yesterday. I said, Lord, what, what's the word right now? And he said this, Robert, no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to make you immovable. You will not be shaken. Look at, look at five people and tell them, I will not be shaken. Turn, turn to the person behind you. I will not be shaken. Online, I will not be shaken. It doesn't matter what comes my way. I 
will not be shaken. How many are with me? Psalm 62, 1. I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. Where does our victory come from? It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from people. It doesn't come from a political party. It doesn't come from my uh, 401k. It doesn't come from my retirement. My victory comes from God. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress where I will never be shaken. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Be strong and, be strong and. We're declaring right now, it doesn't matter what takes place in our country or with our family, with any type of sickness, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Yes. Is sickness going to move you? Is a relationship going to move you? Someone not saying hi to you at church is going to move you? <laughs> Why'd you leave the church? Oh, man, this is so mean over there. This person ignored me. Our pastor ignored me. We're coming. I'm not coming for man. I'm coming for God. I'm here to please God. Unshakable and not moving. We're living in such uncertainty in this nation and in this world. But I'm here to tell you right now, there's no uncertainty with God. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is immovable. He doesn't change his mind. He's the same God before and now. Can I get an amen? I'm immovable. I'm making a declaration. I'm not leaving this church. I'm not leaving my family. I'm not leaving my children. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stick it out no matter what. It doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't matter even what law that passes. We are going to serve Jesus. We are going to serve Jesus. And I will not be shaken. I want you to scream that when I say three. Just say, I will. Just scream it on the count of three. Say, I will not be shaken. One, two, three. Oh! You're playing the drums today, Willie. Look at Willie banging over here playing the drums. Give it up for Willie. And you're new to the, you, you came today for the first time. What's your name? Huh? Give Jonathan first time here. Came to church to help us with keyboard. Let's try that again. I will, at your house, I will not be shaken when I say three. Just declare this thing, scream. If you got to run around the room, run. One, two, three. <laughs> Write this down. Right. You guys are going crazy today. That feel good. You guys want me to do a backflip over here, Jonathan? You're good, man. Number one, write this down. I want you to write a few things down. And we're going to have some time of prayer as well at the end. But write this down. And that's the title, not going to be shaken. Number one, I will not be shaken. Here's a reason. Number one, I will not be shaken because God is still on the throne. And he sits on the throne all by himself. <laughs> that's why I, I can't be shaken because my God is undefeated. Our God is undefeated. He's never lost a battle. Psalms 47, 8. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. What does the word reign mean? It means this. Holds to the highest rank, office, the ruler, the king. God reigns over all of our difficulties. God reigns over every sickness. God reigns over our health. God reigns over our finances. And if God reigns and he's our God, you and I will also reign. He's the highest authority. His name is Jesus. Every sickness has to bow to Jesus. He's on the throne. 
That's why I can't be shaken. I know who my God is. Mondo, come up. I'll use you as an example. We'll, we'll practice social distance. Stay over there. It's cool. I'm God for a second, and you're going to be sickness. You're healed. You're covered by the blood. You're good. What are you doing standing? I'm God. That's right. You're not allowed in my house, sickness. What are you looking at? Sickness, I told you to bow. I dare you try to look up. What? You're on your knees? Now I'm king. I'm over you. I'm over that hard time you're facing in your, your family right now, guys. I'm over that COVID. What do you, don't look at, you know what I mean? <laughs> you bow to me because God is on the throne. I'm on the throne. I'm pretending I'm God. You know what? Just go all the way down here. You don't even deserve to be on your knees. Get down on your face. This is the rulership that we serve. This is the God who's on the throne. Give Jesus a shout of praise. He's on the throne. Man, I didn't tell you to get up. Get down. I tell you when to leave. I'm just joking. Get up and leave. You can leave. Go. Thank you. Give Mondo a round of applause. God is on the throne. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against your house shall prosper. God is on the throne. I love it. That gives me peace throughout the day. Something hits me, so just chill. Be quiet, Psalm 62. Just be quiet for a minute. Because I, I'm not going to be shaking. God is on the throne. And because he reigns, you and I will also reign. Yeah, we got to do our, our part. Yeah, you go vote on Tuesday and... You do your part as, a, as an American citizen, but man, nothing beats this. And just praying to God. And that's why we're praying for 24 hours these next couple of years, 40, whatever it is, 48 hours. We're just praying because God is on the throne. I believe we're going to see the greatest revival in San Bernardino in the next 12 months. I, we're already seeing a revival in Pomona. I believe it. It's already there. It's already there. And guess what? Revival is coming to your house. Your kids are getting saved. How many parents in here, you got kids not saved? Raise your hand. Your kids are getting saved. Your kids are getting saved. God is on the throne. Whatever spirit your child is dealing with has to bow to Jesus. I declare all these hands. Look at all these hands, God. I declare it right now. That these kids will serve the Lord. They might even be in church on Wednesday if they live around the area. We proclaim victory. We proclaim salvation for your children. Because God is on the throne. And if he says my house shall serve the Lord, my house will serve the Lord. I guess MC Hammer had it all right. You can't touch this. I used to love that song. I used, to, I used to jam to that song all the time. I was in Florida. Wasn't that a great jam? Can't touch this. You could try to shake me. You could try to move me. But you can't move my God. Yeah, you can't move my God. You can't move your God. Whew, man, this is, I feel like doing backflips, John. You got me riled up, John. You got to come more often. Get John. Get, you got to give him, a, give him a round of applause. You got to come more often. And now we find out Willie plays the drums. Now we know. Okay. Number one, why aren't we shaking? Who's taking notes? What's number one? Why aren't we shaking? Here's number two, why we're not shaking. I will not be shaken because, I was looking at number three. I will not be shaken because God hears our prayers. He not only hears them, he answers them according to his will. 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. We 
could pray for revival for the nation. We could pray for revival in California. We could pray revival into your family. We can pray for the lost to be saved. We could pray for that grandson to be saved. Why? Because God hears us. So when there's things coming against you, when there's things coming against your family, we're not shaking. We just go to God. God, here I am. Here's this sickness. I give it to you. I'm a living proof. I had COVID about four months ago, and here I am preaching today. <laughs> you're watching right now. You're going to destroy COVID. You're going to be stronger than you've ever been because I declare healing right now. There's somebody watching right now that's fearful. We bind the spirit of fear. We bind that spirit of fear. And intimidation, that's it. It's, in, it's trying to intimidate you. We bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Give God a big shout of praise. That intimidation is done. God hears my prayers. I'm even wearing a t-shirt today. Second Chronicles 714. If my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land you're getting ready for restoration between you and your family you're getting ready for restoration in your health you're getting restoration if you're a business owner get ready you got re you got restoration and favor coming to your business why god is on the throne you've been praying he is hearing you and god not only hears prayers he answers prayers how many were thankful that god answers prayers how many are here because somebody prayed for you I'm here because of my mama praying for me. Heard my prayers. And number three, write this down. I will not be shaken because my faith is in God alone. My faith is in him. My faith is in God. My faith is not, I think I said it before, not in a political party. My faith is not in a, in a person. My faith is not in my wife. My faith is not, my faith is in God alone. If you put your faith in man, they will disappoint you 100% of the time. But we have one who never leaves us or forsakes us. We have one who hears our prayers. He ha we have one that will never fail us. I love I serve an undefeated God. Psalm 62, 5 and 8. Same chapter, go down a few verses. Let all that I am wait quietly before God. For my hope is in him. He alone is my rock. He alone is my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. As David says it again, my victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. There it goes, can't touch this. No enemy can reach you. Why? Because God is on the throne. He's over your life. He's your fortress. He's your safety. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. He's our fortress. These days coming, and we talk about the coronavirus, man. You guys, it's a serious virus, yes, no doubt about it. I was reading the, the, the end times again, and I'm like, this is barely. It says that plagues will come to the earth. That's a, that's a plural, S, plagues. What is God doing in today? He's strengthening us. So I'm reading that scripture yesterday, right? And you read those scriptures on a bad day, it can, it can, give you, it be, it can become a downer. <laughs> I see plagues with a, with a plural S. I told my wife, I said, man, this is barely the first one. According to the Bible, it's an S. We're going to have a whole bunch of them. I said, oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. I'm barely making out of 2020 right now. <laughs> and then I read on. It says, you'll be persecuted. You'll be taken to jail. You'll be going to court. I said, oh, my gosh, let me quit reading this for a second. And I'm reading that, and I was like, man, God, this is what's He goes, yeah, we're just getting closer to the return of me. So everything you see, you're that much closer to, to seeing Jesus. You're that much closer to being in glory. You're that much closer to see your loved ones that are in heaven. You're that much closer, Robert. And I'm reading that yesterday, and God says, but hey, don't, don't forget, you're not going to be shaken. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is, you're not going to be moved. Why 
why do we need, write this down, the 9 o'clock service didn't get this, a couple more minutes really fast. Why do we need this now faith? Write this down. Why do we need this now faith? Talk about now. We need a now faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith. It, I need it today. I can't live off last month's faith. That's Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. I can't live off last week's faith. I need now faith. Because in life you get thrown those curveballs, they come out of nowhere. I need now faith. Why do we need now faith? Write this down. Our now faith is what saves us. Our now faith is what saves us. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. How are we saved? By grace through faith. Not of yourselves. It's a gift from God. Not of works that anyone should boast. Why do we need a now faith? If you're not saved today, you're watching this online, you're here, you don't have Jesus, you need a now faith so you could be saved here in a couple of minutes. Faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. So I need a now faith to be saved. I need a now faith to allow me to experience the impossible. Our now faith is what allows us to experience the impossible. Mark 9, 23. What do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. This is a father who had a possessed kid and he took him to the disciples. The disciples couldn't cast out the demons. And Jesus looks at the disciples and goes, man, you faithless people. How long they got to be with you? And he cast the demon out. And the scripture is saying there, the disciples didn't have the faith to cast out the demon. I don't know about you, I want to see impossible situations turn around. You might be saying, Pastor, it's too late. I'm in an impossible situation. That's where now faith comes in. Now faith makes the impossible possible. When I tell some of my friends, I, like I said, I grew up half my life here and half my life a lot of in Florida. And I talk to my friends a lot over there and they say, you guys just bought an $8 million building in the middle of a pandemic? Have you done lost your mind? I said, yeah, I have lost my mind a little bit. Because, yeah, my carnal mind can't explain what's happening. But I put my faith in Jesus. Now we could buy a building for $8 million during a pandemic. We could buy a food warehouse during a pandemic. We could start a church in Pomona during a pandemic. We could buy a foster home during a pandemic. Because Jesus is on the throne. Give me now faith, God. Raise your hands across this auditorium. Say, Lord, give me now faith. Give me now faith, God. The just shall live by faith in these last days. Fill me with now faith, God. Fill me with now faith, God. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, fill us, fill us. We need now faith to get saved. We need now faith to get a healing, to get an impossible situation. We need now faith to heal us. And that was my third one. You need a now faith to get healed. It's a now faith. And we've gotten hit. We've had ups, we've had downs. He told my week, my week was crazy. And then I get a call from one of our ushers here. He lost his son these last three weeks. Just up, my emotions just going like this. Crying, laughing, crying, laughing. I'm like, God, what's going on? He said, Rob, I'm making you immovable. I know it's tough times. You in this audience right now, you at home, you might be going through the battle of your life right now. I don't even know what you're going through. I don't. He's saying, Pastor, I, I've tried this. I've tried. I don't know if God could turn it around. He can. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up. Don't give up on that business dream that you've had. Oh, it's, it's all done. COVID hit. It's done. My business is done. No. We got business owners in this audience and even watch online. Their businesses have exploded during this pandemic. Exploded. I'm not saying it's going to happen to everybody. All your businesses could go up through. But I'm saying you serve a God who loves you. You serve a God who hears your prayers. He sees the cries you cry at night. He sees that he's going to touch you today. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Give us this now faith, Lord. Thank you, Father. As we come to a close in this service, I got so many more notes. We just don't have time to get into it. It's, it's too much. I will not be shaken. I want you to declare that all week long. 
Nothing's going to move me. I'm committed here. I'm committed there. And nothing's going to move me. And how, how do we it do that? It's through the power of God. You and I can't do it alone. It's the Holy Spirit's ability, the power that lives in you. That you're able to do that. But maybe you're here today, you're not saved. You're watching this right now, you're not saved. This is your day. Don't leave this room. Did a funeral for the 19-year-old, had a heart attack and died. 26-year-old. Sister drops him off, him and sister just hanging out, great day, great. Sister drops him off, say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow, yes, yeah, let's, let's hang out. Sister comes back to pick him up, 26, he's unconscious. We had Randy. Do you guys see Randy? They used to go here. Oh, that broke. Have you guys seen that? He was part of our um, drama team, Randy. You've probably seen him on social media. He, oh, it's a dear friend of mine. Same exact thing. His sister goes and finds him un unconscious. And he died at the hospital. Randy, good friend of ours. Pastor, what are you doing? You guys, we're not promised tomorrow. You're in this room. You're watching us. Man, don't leave this room until you get right with God. The Bible says we're like vapor. We're here like, we're here for one second and gone the next. That's reality. All of us in this room will die one day. That's the reality of it. Unless Jesus comes back fast, which he could come back any second. I pray you come back Tuesday, Lord. Come back Tuesday. No, sure. <laughs> come back Tuesday. Lord. I want Jesus to come back, but at the same time, I still have some family that's not saved. So I, I, yeah, I kid like that, Jesus come back, but in reality, peace means like, oh man, I got that uncle, I got that cousin, and they're not saved yet. Jesus, you could tarry a little bit longer so we could save some souls. And all these laws and things we're going to be voting on, we're just doing our best as Christians to pray, just to get a little more grace so Jesus could save that last harvest right now, because end times are here. If you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want that person, man, that you're fired up about. Man, I see the passion. I want that. I want Jesus to forgive me of all my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. Maybe you're a backslider. He said, man, I've been running from God and I came to church today, my first time in a while. And I just need to rededicate my life to God. I just want a fresh start. If that is you, I want everyone to stand up. Everybody together stand. Now, you're saying, Pastor, I want Jesus. You're at home. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. That's me, Pastor. I need to get right with God. If that is you, when I count to three, raise your hands all across the auditorium. One, don't let nothing hold your hand down. You know who you are. God's just pounding at your heart. You're saying, man, that's you. Got to get right. You got to surrender. This is your day to surrender. When I count to three, if you want to surrender to God, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. See all those hands across the room. See hands over there, hand there, hand there. Can you keep it up for like 30 more seconds? Just like I see you. I see the hand. See the hand. Come on, church. Give a big shout. You're at home. Raise your hand. See the hand. I see the hand. 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 Way in the back. See the hand. See the hand. See the hand. Yes, yes. I want Jesus. I need to get right. Over there in the back. Yeah, I see you. See right there in the yellow. I see you. Yeah, good job. See right there, sir, in the white shirt. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come forward, and we're going to lead you today in a prayer of salvation. Just make your way out of your seats. Come on down. We're going to pray with you right now so you could receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, so you could surrender your life to God. Come on down. Come, come, come. Come on, church. You're still coming down. That's why we're having church. We're having church for souls. Pastor, why you open during the pandemic? For souls. We got a little more time and we're out of here. The rapture is coming. Time is short. We got to save souls. That's why we're flying in John Ramirez from New York, I believe. Yeah, he comes from New York. Why are we flying in John? Ex-Satan worshiper. He's be like a warlock. Crazy, crazy, crazy life before God. Then he radically gets saved. So he's going to give his testimony how he used to worship Satan. He used to worship the devil. And then how he got saved. Why are we flying him over to give his testimony? To save souls. This is what the devil is after. 
this whole pandemic, all the craziness going on, he's, he, he don't want another soul getting saved. He wants a church to be shut down so souls are not getting saved. This is why we have church. Look at this. Coming down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 people. Give the Lord a big shout. Yes, 31, 32. That's God. Everyone can bow their head and close their eyes. You're at home right now? Join us in this prayer. You're going to be saved right now. Get ready. The ones that are online, you're going to say this prayer. Is that, is that mine, yours? Is that yours? I don't have no phone, so I don't That was Jesus. Call him up. Jesus, call him up. Jesus is calling you right now. Jesus is saying, you answered the phone. <laughs> Jesus said, you just answered. You're at home, you're going to say this prayer, you're going to go to igotsaved.com. After you say that prayer online, igotsaved.com, and we'll help you with your walk with Christ. Here in the front, we're going to say this prayer, you're just going to hang tight for a couple of minutes. We'll exchange info, and then we have the classes coming up on next week. You can start discipleship classes in November, November 8th, right? Yes, yeah, start classes. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're at your seat, you need to say this prayer. Say it, don't leave. You know who you are. You say, man, I should have been down there. It's okay. Say the, say the prayer right there at your seat. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I ask forgiveness, and I repent of everything I've done wrong. Jesus, I put my faith in you. Thank you for dying on the cross. I receive you as my Lord and Savior through grace and my faith in you. I am saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Set me free from all my bad habits and all my addictions. Holy Spirit, fill me. And from this day forward, I will not be shaken. From this day forward, I will not be shaken. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm so proud of each and every one of you guys and gals and teenagers. Online, go to igotsaved.com. We'll, we'll help you with your next step with God. Wednesday, John Ramirez, live in person. This Wednesday is going to be live in person. We're flying him out all the way from New York to give his testimony live in person. This Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Love to have you guys. Have a great rest of the week. I will not be shaken.